guys are doing amazing. This is Nas, and today we are building, we are building a rock, paper, scissors game. That's right, a rock, paper, scissors game. Check this out, right? I can go ahead and go through this game. You've got a score. If I, for example, click on hand, the computer will pick one for you right here. The computer picks something for you. And then, basically, if it's a tie, it will say it's a tie. Now, let's try play it again. If I, for example, say it's like this. Oh, you lose. Ah, oh, I suck. <laughs> okay, and then you lose. If I play again, let's try another one. Let's try this one. This one. It's a tie again. Damn it. Let's do this one. You win. And you see, as you win, your score increases right here. Again, guys, this is a project by Frontend Mentor. So if you guys want to check them out, right, the link is down below in the description, of course. And I also have the GitHub for you. So if you want to follow along with me the whole time, right, I actually have the full project done for you. Go ahead, go down the description. There will be a link right here. It will be this link right here, the challenge link. It's a GitHub link. Click download, download a zip, okay? And then you can actually just follow along as I go along with it. Of course, you can use the images that's in there on here and so forth. But if you guys want to actually fully check it out, I would say go to Front of Mentor and then you should see it on here. So if I go to Front of Mentor here, let's go to Challenges. Yes, go to Challenges. If I just type Rock, Paper, Scissors, Rock, Paper, Scissors right here. Boom, boom. Here it is. So I highly encourage you guys go ahead and just view it, and I highly encourage you guys just uh, create a create a uh, you know a login there as well. Okay, guys. All right, my friends. Hope you guys are excited. Hope you guys are ready to get started. I know everybody is. Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. Those of you who are on YouTube, guys, you know the drill. Down in the description below, follow along. Uh, you know as much as possible. If you cannot. Just watch the video, and then, of course, you can always rewind later on. All right, guys? Okay, cool. Let's do it, my friends. So, this is what you're going to be building, of course, the Rock, Paper, Scissors game. What is this using? Well, a few things. One is going to be using JavaScript, so JS. And, of course, we have HTML <coughs> and CSS. Now, this might be a very simple stack, but the thing is with this stack is you can do a lot with this stack. With this stack, you can do a lot of different things, and, of course, with this stack, you can, you know, uh, most importantly, learn the logic. There's a lot of logic that goes behind the scenes and how to actually make this work. And that's what we'll be focusing on. All right, beautiful. Let me go ahead and make sure this is a roadcaster. Beautiful. Uh, Amanath, if you can, please go ahead and mute everybody. And please just unmute, unmute me. Thank you. I'm all good now. All right, cool. At this point, that's pretty much it. So the first thing you guys want to do is... Everybody, those are on Zoom, those are on YouTube. Let's, of course, you know the drill. Let's create our new application. I'm going to put this to my right-hand side. I'm going to put this on my right-hand side. I don't need this anymore. And, of course, and I'm going to create a new project. So let's go ahead and go to Project. And let's create a new project. And then let's right-click click New Folder. And what should we call this project? We'll call it Rock, Paper, Scissors. Scissors, right there. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Again, empty project, nothing inside of that, okay? I'm going to move my project to the left, to the right-hand side, so I can see some of the code. It's getting started in here. Sorry, just I love that song. <laughs> Such a good song. Okay. Beautiful. And then what you guys want to do is go ahead and open a file new window. You know, the drill, file, new window, open up this right here. Click open. And then let's open up the rock, paper, scissors game. Let's go to projects here. And the rock, paper, scissors. Click open on this one. Again, like I said, guys, you guys have all the code. Download it. Go watch it. You guys, there's no restrictions on it whatsoever. Okay? Beautiful. First things first, we're going, first things first <clears throat> we're going to do is create an index.html file. That's, of course, that's usually the beginning. That's right, code. It does not seem too difficult. That's right. A beautiful. So the first thing first we need to do is create an index.html. So it's going to right-click new file. We'll say index. Ooh, let's say uh, new file. We'll say index.html. Just like that. All right. I'm going to place the music as we're coding this up, of course. Right. And of course, let's, let's add the boilerplate. And you guys know, what is the way to add the boilerplate HTML? Anybody remember this? Anybody remember this? 
what is a way to add boilerplate HTML? Yeah, that's right. So just not just tab, but exclamation point right here. Dumb, boom, done. Okay, done. The set boilerplate HTML is already added, by the way. Okay, make this a little bit smaller. Beautiful. All right, boilerplate HTML. Let's change this style to be a rock, paper, scissors. Scissors, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Beautiful. Okay. And of course, now that we, if we look at this page, right, of course, there's a lot of what's going on on this page that we need to do, right? It might seem compl complicated, and actually, it can be a little bit complicated if you don't know exactly how to divide a project up from this into small little pieces, guys, all right? Trust me, there can be some difficult parts. So for us, to make this easier, I want you guys to tell me, okay, what would I do, for example? How would I divide this, this project? What are the first steps, and what is the second step? Let's go and look at this. What's the first step we should do to maybe create a project like this? Anybody know here? You're on YouTube, maybe you're on here. What is the first step we should do to create a project? That's right, Shamar, create a wrap-up. What is another thing we should do? Make divs. Yeah, make divs. That's right. So let's think about number one is, okay, what kind of boxes is this divided into, right? But before I even go into that, guys, sometimes I do this, and I want you guys to follow along with me. Let's go ahead and create a new file, and I say plan.md. That's right, plan on MD. And so for example, I like to create a small plan. So for example, number one, I'm gonna say, you know what? Let's go and create the boxes, create the boxes for how it looks like. Okay. Number two, all right. Now, of course, let's figure out how do we make sure that, how do we, for example, right? Number two, let's go ahead and add, create the header, right? That's the header. The header is gonna be which part? The header is gonna be, which part? It's gonna be this part right here, right? That's the header right here, okay? So create the header portion. Oh, the link to the project, uh, great, right here. Here's the link to the project. I give it to you guys. Boom, the link to the project, okay? So we've got the header, okay? After gen creating the header, what else do we do, guys? Tell me. What is number three? What else do we do? What is number three? Anybody know? Well, for me, it's going to be to actually create the, to, that's right. Well, the header is the banner. The header is the banner. I'm going to say to create the rock, paper, scissors, buttons, paper, and then scissor, scissor buttons, right? So I always like to divide these things up because I know that a lot of you guys, right? A lot of you guys, I know. A lot of you guys do not know. So you said what? The link project, what? No, the link cannot be from yesterday, guys. If you are in, let me make sure it's all good. No, the link in the description is not from yesterday. It's from today, guys. You guys are not correcting that one. All right, good, no worries. Boop, 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 boop. Right, number four is going to be the following, right? The one thing I want to think about is, is, Okay, well, what happens when I click on, on one of these buttons, right? How do we make a decision, right? How do we showcase who, who won, right? Remember, in Fundamental, if we look at our Rock, Paper, Scissors game, it kind of looks like this, right? We have, you know, uh, basically, when you go ahead and say, I win, or whatever it might be, of course, it's going to showcase who wins, as you can see on the, in the actual picture, right? So how do we do that? That's right, user interaction, right? So basically, we just say, uh, create an on click event right create an on-click event for the rock paper scissors paper scissors okay and then five five the last thing is gonna be what after that after we create an on-click so we can have an event what should this event do what should happen when i click on something anybody know those of you who are on zoom lamont david craig anybody what do you guys think Right? What is the answer? That's right. What is it? Who wins? That's right. Right. But what should actually happen? Well, when clicking the button, right? We need to hide. We need to hide, right? We need to hide one. We need to hide this portion. Hide this portion, right? Hide the buttons and show the actual winner right 
So we need to figure out a way to hide these things, right? Because remember, if I click on this, you see, it replaces it. It replaces the actual content of that div. You see, so we need to be very careful around that. Okay, great. Six. Six. Okay. What now? We've hit the buttons. We showed this. What now? What do we need to figure out? Okay. So we figured a way, okay, to maybe to we figured a way to go to this page. Okay. Go to this page. What do we do after that, after that page? Not necessarily. We want to focus on this just yet. Because remember, there's one big thing we haven't done yet, guys. One big thing we have done yet. This one we showcased. That's what we picked. What about the house? How do we know what the house picked? How do you know what the house? But you guys are going to, we don't want to think about the score just yet. No, we're not clicking the score. Instead, we're figuring out, hey, what is the computer going to pick now? That's right. That's right. We need to figure out what is the computer going to pick. So, so figure out <clears throat> what the computer is going to pick. It's going to pick. That's right. You see? We're figuring out what the computer is going to pick. That's part one. That's the most important part, guys. Right? There's That's right. It's a random loop. So we're going to pick a random pick basically from that section. Okay? So after we've picked that section, okay, after, we, after the computer, so we pick this, computer picks this. What's next? Anybody know? Maybe David. Maybe Sam. Anybody know? Hmm? Well, here's what I say to that. Compare the, that's right, compare the results. Now we compare results and figure out who wins. Now, awesome. But of course, we've done this. The one thing we didn't account for is we create the header, we create the rapper service game, but we did not create the actual view for this. We did not create the view for this, guys. That's the interesting portion, right? That's the interesting portion. So actually, after we create the rock, paper, scissors buttons, we need to create the view for the contest. I call it the contest. The contest is this view. Because remember, think of it like this. This right here is a div. It's a div. Okay, it's a div. And basically, when I play again, and this is also a div. Remember, this is also a div right here. But this div, get this div right here. This div right here, oops, no, not this one. This div right here gets replaced with which div? Anybody know? This div gets replaced with what div? Anybody? What is it? Anybody? What would it be? What do you guys think? Sam, David, Jay, what do you guys think? What is this replaced with? I'm winning, you guys. Result. That's right. With the results, right? See this replaces now this this div right here replaces the other div. You see what I mean? So the, we swap in the divs is what we're trying to do here, right? So if you think about it, what we've done right now is we created a visual representation of how we want to create an application like this. And for all you beginners, all you beginners who have the hardest time with starting anything, because I know you do. I see this every single second. I see this every single day. Oh, I have the hardest time starting anything. I can copy, I can watch tutorials, no problem, but I can do not know how to actually create something. You're not spreading your application into small little parts. You see what I mean? You think too big sometimes. The thing is when we think too big, when we think too broad, when we think too broad and we think that, oh, this project is so big, then this project is undoable for us. Versus if you, Make a project and you're like, you know what? Okay, well, I just have to do it step by step. You know, little step by step. That's right, right? You go, okay, well, create the boxes, create the header, create the rock, paper, scissors uh, buttons, create the view for the contest, create the on-click events, you know? So that's pretty much it, my friends. You see? Now we have stuff we need to take. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes or no? Can I get a thumbs up? I got a thumbs up. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Sweet. So let me go ahead and continue on. Let me drink my, uh, my tea because I like my tea. Always gives me the power. And let's go to minus HTML. Beautiful. Now, in minus HTML, a few things I want to do. One, 
Uh, before I actually go into the body, I wanna uh, do this. I want to change the font style of this whole thing, right? So I wanna change the font style of this whole thing. Okay. Now, to change the font style, I'm actually using a font called, let me show you here. Here. I'm using this font right here. So this is called Barlow something. Barlow. So Barlow font. And the way you guys can get that is if you go to Google Fonts here. Google Fonts. Okay. And you just go to Google Fonts. And then you just select the search up font called Barlow. Okay. I'm going to say Barlow right here. You see, if you just simply go to Barlow. Okay. And then you see we have weight of 600 right here. All you will do is now, say we have a weight of 600, you will select this Barlow. So select this style, for example. And right away, it tells you exactly what you need to do to actually use this. Simple as that. So for example, it tells me, hey, I need to use this so right here. See? So I select the 600. And what does it do? Well, I just copy this whole thing. I'll paste it in for you guys. You guys have it. And I'll just paste it in for myself. Boom. That's it. You see? And so now what we've just recently done is we went ahead and we imported a new font family. Okay? It's something I want you guys to really focus on. All right. Next up. Let's go to our body. The first thing I want to create is create a wrapper for this whole body. Okay? So let's do this. We're going to say div. Div class is equal to wrapper. Beautiful. All right, and this wrapper is basically going to be the whole wrapper of this whole body to make sure the whole body is just a full height. Understand that? Okay. Understand that? All right, beautiful. So we're doing that. And then while we're doing that, I'm going to create the CSS. So let's go ahead, new file, and I'm going to say style.css. Beautiful, right? So the style, the CSS, right? What we'll do, well, remember the drill. We like to right away update the padding and the margin for everything. So I'm going to say over here, star. I'm going to say padding zero. And anybody know who in the Zoom chat or maybe you're on YouTube, okay? And this is not pre-recorded, by the way. If you guys are on YouTube, this is not pre-recorded. This is me, <laughs> okay? That's right. I did. It's called CSS reset. So I'm going to say padding zero. Why are we doing this? Anybody know why we're doing it specifically? Yeah, but why are we doing padding zero, margin zero? That's right, Joe. Margin zero. Margin zero. Okay. Margin zero. Great. Why are we doing this? Well, because it's because we want to reset the each one. The you know every each one, all these p tags, they have all these little weird margins and paddings. Okay. Okay. And so what we want to do is not that. So we want to do margin padding zero and then do box sizing border box. Border dash box right here. Box sizing border box. Beautiful. Next thing I want to do is I want to change the font family of the whole body. So I'm going to go to the body here. And I'm going to say here font family. Okay. And I'm going to say the the following font family, the one that actually it told me, right? So it's going to be like this. Font family. Boom. Barlow condensed sans serif. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right? To reset the default padding. But that's right, Udai. It's, it is to reset the default padding and margins. You're correct on this one, right? You're correct. To, to remove the default. That's right, Abul. That's correct. Right. Right. To kill the defaults. Amazing job, everybody. Now, once we've done that, of course... Once you've done that, let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back to NSHTML. HTML. So you have nothing inside the wrapper. We've, done, we've created nothing so far, which is okay. I want to right away already, let's go ahead and open the live server. Some of you guys might have the live server. Hopefully you guys do. If you guys don't do this, just uh, add the extension for live server. Okay. Open with live server. Let's go ahead. And of course, it's a wide screen, but that's okay. That's not, that's not our issue. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead... I want to change the background color of actually the whole wrapper and make this wrapper the whole width and height of, you know, of the, what's it called here? So let's go to style the CSS one more time. 
and wait, 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 where did my, where did my the application go? Sorry. Where did my application go? Right here, there it goes. I'm going to talk about the rapper. The rapper. And inside the wrapper, a few things. I'm going to give this full width of 100, 100. VW. Now, anybody know what VW stands for? Anybody know what VW stands for? What does that VW stand for? Anybody know? What does that VW stand for? Yeah. VW basically stands for the whole view width. That's right. So basically the whole view width, which is going to be this whole thing, right? That's the 100 v VW. Okay, great. Then I'm going to say height of 100 VH. Of 100 VH. Okay. That's the, what does the VH stand for, guys? That is what? The vertical height. That's this height right here. That's the vertical height, okay? And then I'm going to give it a gradient, a small gradient. And here's the gradient I want you guys to use. You guys have it in the file, so you guys don't have it. So let me go ahead and put that for you. I can actually put it in the Zoom chat if you guys want. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And I will put it in the Zoom chat for you as well. Right here. Okay. Right. So this is a radio gradient and let's see, save that. And we have absolutely nothing. <laughs> Anybody know why that's the case? Well, let's take a look at it here. Radio gradient, it looks pretty, pretty good. Should not be the reason why it's not showing. Let's go and inspect down on this one. Wrapper. Sometimes it just happens for some reason, which I have no idea why, which is okay. Oh, I know why it's not happening. Anybody know why? This is not happening. That's right, Malisha. We need to connect the style the style sheet. Let's go index HTML. Let's type link, and we see link CSS. Boom! It right away adds the style CSS for us. Don't have to think about it too much. Hey, there we go. There is our full on gradient. Okay, there is a full on gradient. Beautiful. Now, after the wrapper we've created, we need to now go back and now create the scoreboard. So let's create the header scoreboard, right? I like, I like to call it. So I'm going to say div class. And again, the scoreboard is going to be, that's what section? That is this section right here. Okay, scoreboard. So div class, I'm going to call it scoreboard. Okay. So we're creating the specific divs. And then within the scoreboard, we have what? A few things. Okay. In the scoreboard, uh, we have what? We have the, um, what is it? What do you guys know? The title. So we have a few things, right? We've got this uh, little title logo, I call it. Okay, this title, title logo. Right here, of course. And we have the score. So let's take a look. Yeah, that's right. Title and picture. That's right. So here, here's what we have. So number one is div class. Okay title okay the class title and then inside the title what are we gonna say well we're gonna actually link the the title image so those of you who, guys again we have the all the assets down below in the description below you can either go to front mentor we have the assets below as well okay so from the actual whole project so if I do this if we go to assets right here Here's all the project, all the assets. You can just go ahead and click download the whole zip. So what I will do is just simply, because I already have it inside in here, I am going to download it as a full zip so that I can actually get the assets myself. <laughs> Let me see. Download zip. Hey, beautiful. Let me go ahead and unarchive it. Beautiful. Nice. I'm going to take the assets and I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to put them into my project. Oh, what just happened? Take them and put them all the way in my project right here. Add folder to workspace. Yes. Right here. Done. You see? Oh, no. I wanted to put it inside here. Move. That's right. No, oh, come on. Not inside the actual. Whoa. Hmm. Mm, okay, I got a better idea. Let's create a new folder inside in that case. Let's call it assets because it's not pushed putting the whole folder for me. And I'll just put the images like this. Right here. Okay, that's much better right there. See? So I put the assets individually for here. 
I don't need to do this in that case. I need to, I can just simply remove folder from workspace. Don't need that. And right here. So we have the assets folder in here. You can just simply add it just the way I did it as well. Okay. Now we'll just go ahead and Im include our image, right? We'll say source is equal to what? Assets. And we'll say what? We'll say the title.png right there. That way, if I look at this right here, let me go ahead and do this. Mm, the PNG is not showing up. Am I doing something wrong, anybody? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Out of that PNG, it's right here, right? Inspect element. <laughs> it's really weird why that's the case. I think the live server dropped, that's why. Okay. No, open flight server one more time. Okay, there we go. I think the live server dropped, that's why. It's okay. Alright. So save that. So we've got the title. Next one is, go is gonna be the scorecard, right? So let's go ahead and create the scorecard. That's gonna be inside the 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 scoreboard. So div class, right? And it's gonna be what? Score. Boom, right there. Inside that, okay, inside that is gonna be uh we're gonna create one a score like this. And then the number of the score is gonna be an H1, like this. That's gonna be for now, it will always start with zero, guys. Right? What what dot? Is there a dot? Did I miss something? What dot? Sam, what did I miss? I think I got it, right? I think it should be good. Yeah, it should be good, I think. Right? So H10 right there. So now we've got this situation, of course, but it's not done. Now let's go ahead and actually modify. Now something the way I like to do it sometimes is, uh, let me show you a really cool trick here. So if I right click, right click and inspect them on this one. Okay, here's a really cool trick. Sometimes I actually just like to do it myself. <laughs> right away inside inspect element so I can see how the styles are changing really fast. And this is a really cool tool that I like to use personally that you know just helps me out and make things CSS a lot better. So for example, if I look, go to the scoreboard here, okay if i go to the scoreboard here and i want to change it so for example first things first i'm going to give it a width so here so width all 700 pixels to give a specific width after that i'm going to say border i'm going to give it a border actually so you guys can see exactly what i'm working with one pixel solid solid and it's going to be white why because if you look at it here right we have a solid white border around this whole thing make sense Beautiful. After that, we're gonna do what? Well, we'll say border radius to make it a curvature. Border radius. And how much do you guys wanna give a border radius? Anybody know? What do you guys think? How much, how much border radius do you guys wanna do? I wanna say maybe 10 pixels, 15 pixels. I'm gonna say 15 pixels right here. Beautiful. That looks good. Okay. That looks great. Yeah. Somebody said 2 EM. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> 2 EM. All right. Then the, after that, what's going to happen? Let's move it a little bit more up. So let's do margin top. If I want to push it from the top side, what I guess you, what do I use, guys? If I want to push it from the top side, so margin top, margin dash top is going to be equal to what? 50 pixels. That's right, right? So that's push it to the top. Don't worry about this whole thing. Don't worry about it. That's going to happen. Okay. Don't worry about that just just yet. Okay. Don't worry about it just yet. All right yeah that's right 10 pixels 50 pixels after that what i want to do is let's also so we have a width let's also give it a height we give it a height of 150 pixels okay beautiful all right and then what we want to do guys you see how currently wrap up a scissors what does it look like well it's here then this is here we want to put the score to the right hand side what do we do anybody know you guys know at this point right on zoom on youtube what do you guys think display what display flex my friends that's right so we'll do display flex yeah beautiful display flex okay and like you see it went from left to right now how do we push these away from each other how do we push this away from each other so make sure it's all like this what do we guys use that anybody know anybody know well we're gonna use what justify content 
you guys completed it for me. Justify content, what? Yeah, space between. That's right. Space between. A hey, beautiful. Okay. That's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. Nice. Beautiful. Now, the next thing for that is let's go ahead and go to our what? Um, our this. How do we make sure this wrapper? You see, this wrapper is great, but how do I center this whole little thing in the middle? Anybody know? How do I center this whole middle thing in the middle? Anybody know? That's right. Display flex as well. The flex display flex as well. So, I'm going to go with the wrapper here, and I will say display flex, flex, a display flex. And that's going to be what direction are we going to do it with? Remember, we have the top, we have top and bottom. What direction are we using, guys? Anybody know? What is it? What is it? Anybody know? I'm waiting for you guys. Column. That's right. So I'm going to say flex direction column. So I'm going to say flex, flex, direction, column. That's it, right? Column. Okay. And of course, you guys know the drill at this point. If I want to center this horizontally, I'm going to say align item center. Like this. Okay. That's it. You see? I have centered the way I wanted to do. Okay, beautiful. Next up, inside the scoreboard, of course, I want to make sure this is also centered, of course. So I'm going to say justify content space between. What about the ver vertical alignment, guys? What, what should I do here for the vertical alignment? What do you guys think? Well, align items. Center, right? There, see? Now it's all centered like just how we wanted to center. All right. So now we've got the scoreboard. That's beautiful. We've got, you know, uh, this. Let's now take a look at the actual scorecard, which is which one? The actual, this scorecard right here. Let's talk about this one. I want this scores card to also be a certain width. So I'm going to give this scorecard a width of 150 pixels. Okay. And a height of. 114 pixels okay next thing i want to make sure that it has a color of what what color do we want to make sure it has well let's take a look at it you see we have it's like a it's a box right so it's a box right here and what is the background color for this box well one it's white so let's do that right now so let's do background color color white beautiful of course right and then, of course, we, we need to have a border radius for this one. So let's do border radius. Radius is going to be what? What is the border radius we, can, we should give it, guys? Maybe 8 pixels like this. I like that. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, of course, after that, we have, you see, how we need to add some space in this to the right-hand side. How much space should we have, guys? Anybody know? What do you guys think? I would say, what, maybe 30 pixels? So, and how do we do the spacing? Anybody know? How do we do spacing if I want to add more, more space at the right-hand side? What is it? Yeah, margin. That's right. So I'm going to say margin right. Margin that's right. And I'm going to say here, what? 30 pixels. Yeah, exactly. Right? Margin of 30 pixels. Beautiful. That's right. That's right. I need to, yeah. Okay. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, beautiful. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. One second here, guys. I want to be able to read all the comments. <clears throat> I'm, yeah, I'm actually using VS Code. That's right. I will use VS Code here in a second. Okay. I will use VS Code in a second. I like to do this so you guys can see this really fast. Right? After you've got the score, what do we need to do, everybody? So we got the score. Everything is good. Of course, we want the score to be centered. So what do we do? If I want to put the score in the zero in the center, anybody know what are we do, going to use? Anybody know? Those of you on Zoom, what are we going to use to put the score in the center? What do you guys think? Just curious. Yeah, align. Yeah, so we'll first need to display flex on this one. So display flex on this one. Of course, and it's left to right, but we want we wanted to have it like top to bottom. So I'm gonna say what? Yeah, so I'm gonna say flex direction column, right? That gives a top to bottom section, and then I'm gonna say what? Justify content center. This is for her vertical alignment now, and then align items what? Center. That's it, right? That's kind of how it goes. Right there, look, it's looking a lot beautiful already, right? um beautiful sweet i love it okay next up what i want to do is i'm actually going to just copy all these styles that we just created and i'm going to do this one thing i want to add is for this title is for the title i'm going to add a small padding for the title here so i'm going to say padding left here 
or margin left here. Margin left, because just how we have the padding for the top right section, I'm going to add the margin for the left section too. Boom. See here? Beautiful, right there, see? Looks so much better. Yeah, knitting, it's text align won't, won't work so well in this situation like this. Okay, so that's it guys. So why do I do this? Very simple. Sometimes I like to just test it out in my, you know, inspect element, and then I will right away put it into my actual application. So now, check this out. Now all I have to do is the following. I right click, I go to here, right? And I will slowly do this. So I'm going to go back to my style CSS have the class wrapper here. So I'm gonna say wrapper and I'm gonna give it all the styles that I copied here. So display flex, select direction, copy this, of course, and then paste it in. Boom, done. You see what I mean? Boom, done. Done and done. So the wrapper, that's all good. After that, I go to the scoreboard. So let's go to the scoreboard here. Let's go to the scoreboard. Same thing, I'm gonna create a class here called scoreboard. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy all of these styles right here, right? Copy all these styles to the scoreboard. Boom, done, you see? Just like that. After that, I'm going to create what? I'm gonna create which uh, style? I'm gonna create the, uh, I need to work, focus on the title section. So I'm gonna say scoreboard what? I'm gonna say that title. So I'm gonna say that title. Okay, same thing. Margin left 30 pixels, so copy this one right here. Good. After that one, we have the score that we focused on. So let's go to the score one. All right, so we have now that score. That score. And I'm going to copy everything from there into there. All right? Boom. Beautiful. All right. What's up, Kenan? How are you, my friend? Awesome, sweet. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we've saved this, right? We put it into our style set. If I refresh this, look, see, it's the fault. It's just how we did it. How do you auto format? You should have a prettier. If you're not, if you're not auto format, you should have a prettier right here, a prettier. So you want to use get an extension called a prettier extension to do that. Awesome, sweet. So we got that portion. Uh, next up is I want to change these colors a little bit and modify the actual uh, H1. So I'm gonna say. Right here, dot score, h1, h1, okay, I'm gonna say give it a color, color, and I'm gonna say the color is the following. You guys, the color is this one, right? The color is this one. So if I save that and I go to my application, here's the color right here, see? That's the color of the h1, right? That's the color, of the, yeah, that's right. Harsha, looks much better now, okay? Sam, your images should be working, Sam. You just download the whole thing. Your images should be, if your image is not working, it's because you put the assets folder in the right, in the wrong folder, Sam. You have to put the assets folder in the right folder. Okay? Okay? So try it one more time, Sam. There's no reason why your images should not be working, my friend. There's literally, literally no reason whatsoever. No reason. Period. Because it's a simple HTML application. So if you have your index.html, make sure your assets folder are inside. If you don't see your, if you do this and you don't see assets folder disappearing, you did something wrong. That's right, you did something wrong, right? And if you go to, for example, your index.html, right? If you want to actually add the assets folder, right? Look, look this right here means homepage. This right here means, hey, go to the homepage and then go to the assets folder. And as you're doing this, you should actually have it. So dash assets dash title png and of course make sure you have the live server move your images or change the folder name yeah that's right do not change the folder name do not move your images guys okay do not move your images it is a large code and will appear when i add to assets it is a large what sam what are you talking about sam no it should not be so if i have here let me show you guys here, I have my app game main, which I downloaded, okay? And my assets folder is here. Here's all my images. Take all these images and just drag them into right here. Just drag them. That's all you have to do, Sam. 
Just drag them. That's all you got to do, my friend. Just drag them in, okay? You don't have to do much more than that, okay? Just drag them in. You can even go simply to your whole folder. So if I just simply go to my projects folder, right? Rock, paper, scissors. Here, just drag the whole folder into here as well. That will work as well, okay? That's it. We want to make sure that you do continue with us. Okay, beautiful. So we've got the the H1. Let's go back to my style the CSS. Let's go back to my style the CSS. Okay. Yeah, good good thing retro. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there's 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 no you guys can get it if if Sam if you can't get the images working, I'm sure you can. Trust me, I'm sure you can. You just have to copy in the right direction, that in the right way. That's it. I have my full, I have my full confidence you can. Okay, next one, I want to focus on the score one, this title right here, score, it says right here, right? So let's do that right now. So I'm going to say score, score, P tag, donezo, right? Color, color changes now. The color is going to be the 2A, whatever, the, whatever this color is, cold, right? Let's give it a different font size. Font size of what? Font size of 16 pixels. Okay. And then save that, of course. And then let's do a font weight of 600. Of 600. Okay. And then let's do line height of 19 pixels. Just so that it's a little bit higher right there. Beautiful. Okay. And after that, let's go ahead and give it a letter spacing of 2.5 pixels. Boom. Nice. And then, honestly, that's, let me see here. Mm, that's pretty much it. The only thing I don't like is like, I feel like this number is a little bit bigger. This H1, I feel like it's a little bit bigger. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I think the reason why this is bigger right here is because I need to give it a, font, a different font size. Sam, did you get it by the way? Sam. The color, my friends, is going to be... The, this is the color right here. Sam, just keep trying, man. You just keep trying. You just keep trying. Make sure the folder, your assets are in the right folder. That's it. What? What do you mean missing in the folder? What do you mean missing in the download? Go to the download. It's here. Right here. Code. Download the zip. Right here. Code. Download the zip. That's it. Code. Download the zip. And then, then your assets folder should be in there. Okay. Unzip it. Guys, unzip it. Unzip it once you download it. Good. And it should be right there. There's no reason why. Yeah. Right here. Unzip it from here. That's it. And here's your assets folder, guys. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yay. Okay, cool. You got it. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. I just, you know, I don't like small things like these to just to, to, for how... For, I do, not, I do not like it when things like these, like, you prevent us, you know, from, from continuing, like, small things, like, you know, do not allow you guys to continue on. So then font size of 56 pixels, guys. And, of course, that's pretty much it. So if I do that, save that. Hey, let's go. So here's our whole scoreboard. That's it. Our scoreboard is done, right? So if I go to my plan, right, the header, which is a scoreboard, scoreboard is done. I like to call it. It's done though, right? Let's go to the rock, paper, scissors buttons, of course. Now we need to create this one. This is going to be a little bit more difficult, guys, but that is okay. The way I want to do is the following, right? If I go to my index, so we have scoreboard. What should we call the next section, which is, let me play this one, this section. What should we call this? Anybody think? Right? What should we call this section? What should we call this section? Well, we, I'm going to call this section the uh, main. I'm going to call it hands, like... Which hand did I pick? Did I pick this hand, this hand? So I'm going to call it actually hands, guys, okay? I'm going to call it hands, okay? So I'm going to say div class. Boom. Okay, div class hands. Boom. And then inside that is going to be very simple. Inside that is a few things. 
We've got our left hand. Okay, we've got this one, this one, of course, and this one, okay? So let's do this right here. We'll have div class is equal to what? Is equal to um, paper. So we're gonna have paper as a hand as well, right? Then we're gonna have which one? Div class. Okay, I will start adding JavaScript in a little bit after we have the hands done, okay? Div class scissors. Cause like there's no reason to add JavaScript if the HTML is not done. <laughs> it's as simple as that guys. Okay. There's no reason to add JavaScript. If the HTML is not done, then JavaScript is useless. Scissors. And then we have div class. Div class is equal to rock. Done. Div class rock. Okay. Then I go to my, uh, then I'm going to add a few images. One, of course we got the left image right here. Got the left images. Okay. Why use HTML? Because Rafik will use HTML because, well, pages are made from HTML. This is not a React.js application. It's a JavaScript HTML and CSS application. Okay, so let's do this right now. Now let's do the image. If you want to create HTML using JavaScript, then be my friend. Go ahead. Okay, then I'm going to do the assets. Okay, assets. Okay. And then I'm going to give it a paper.png. So first one's going to be paper.png. The next image is going to be which one, guys? And next, next image. So image. Image source is equal to what? Assets. Oops. Like this. Okay. Assets. And which one? P uh, what is this one? This is the scissors one, right? So scissors. Boom. And the last one is going to be image source is equal to what assets and then i'm gonna give it what a hand okay hand no i should know which one rock paper no rock that's the one rock that's right so we've got these images okay let's see what actually how it works out okay let's see hey we've got it nice nice beautiful beautiful so Okay, with that, with what we have so far, of course, okay, we've got these images in here, but of course, they're not functional. There's nothing going on here. So let's go ahead and, and make them functional. Let's go to our style of CSS. And the first thing I want to work on is actually going to be, well, it's hands, right? So the one thing I want to work on is the following. So let's go ahead and do dot hands. Boom. Oops, that's not what I want. Right? Well, again, we want to go where make sure these hands come from left to right like this, right? All these little hands go from here to here, right? The way I want to think about it is like this. I'm going to constrain my box in a way. I'm going to put my box like this. I'm going to create this div right here and give it a session width in a way where this will go here. This will go here from left to right. And then this is still going to go left to right, but it's actually going to wrap and go to the next line. It's going to wrap to the next line. Rosa asked, why did I not add slashes? Uh, good question. Don't have to add a slash here, honestly, because this slash means root folder. That's what this means. Root folder. And I'm, the index.html is actually already in the root folder. So that's why we did not add that slash in here. I mean, I can actually remove this. It doesn't matter too much, honestly. But, right? Sometimes I do it because to make sure it is for, it's coming from the root folder. Because I mean, let's remember, assets is inside the root folder, guys. Okay? Okay, as inside the, the the root folder. So let's do that hands, and inside there, uh, a few things. One is gonna be what? Let's give it a sp specific width. So I'm gonna say width is going to be. It's gonna be 476 pixels. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna give it a height of 430 pixels. Boom. Okay. So now it's again, it's top to bottom, but now the specific height and width that we are constraining it to, right? Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, check this out. I'm going to say display flex. Flex. Okay. See, now it's from left to right. Great. No problem. Now, of course, it's still not wrapping though. Like, why is this <coughs> still not wrapping? Let me see here for a second. Look at this. If you look at our hands, 
You see, you see how we have we have constrained the actual box so it's smaller, but this rock is actually outside the box. As you can, if you guys can see that right there, you see it's outside the box. Not necessarily flex direction left retro, not necessarily. All we need to do is say this: flex, wrap, wrap. Boom! You see right there, just like that. So it wrapped to the next line right away. You know, if you constrain it. <clears throat> Actually, Magic, it's going to look amazing on mobile, actually. So you're wrong on that one. Because if you look at Fundamentor, it's going to look amazing, as you can, can see. Yeah, it's about how you design it. You can always make everything it may look amazing if you design it properly. That's it. So, so then we're going to do Justify Content. Center to make sure it's all centered here. Hey, you see? Now it's all beautifully centered. I love it. Look, we're already, already, already in a much, much better position, okay? Next up, I want to give some margin to push this to the top right here. So, what am I going to use, anybody? Anybody know? What I'm going to use? Well, I'm going to use the following. I'm going to say flex wrap. No, not flex wrap. Hold on. <laughs> who, what, who knows what am I going to use? What am I going to use? What do you guys think? Margin top, that's right. So, margin dash dash top like this our dash top and i'm gonna say what let's give it a about 100 pixels boom done okay so now it's that now of course now we've got this one thing you guys want to see is you see how we have this triangle thing right here you see this triangle triangle zoom 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 see this triangle well it's actually just an image that's right it's actually an image that's correct okay it's actually an image so if you took a look at it let's take a look at our image I took a look at our image. It's going to be this triangle. So assets, triangle.png. This is the whole image right here. <laughs> Boom, right there. You see? So this is an interesting way. How would you put this image behind these three little buttons? Anybody can, anybody think of how you would do that? Just really curious. Can anybody think of how you would do that? Hmm. Position absolute. No, I'm um, yes, Osada. Background image. Okay. Background image. That's right. The easiest way is going to do background image. So, for example, I'm going to say background image here. I'm going to put it here on the top. I'm going to say background image URL. Okay. I'm going to say assets right here. And this one, I'm going to say triangle. If you guys have the um, um, the actual this page, I'm you I'm saying I'm doing this. If you're actually using, I'm saying this right here, right? I don't need to do that anymore because my assets are directly inside. I'm in all I'm inside the root folder right now. You know, currently you know here I'll be split this up into folders of CSS. That's why you have to do the dot dot slash to go back to, to the root folder. You see, that's how we did that. But anyways. Just want to make sure you guys are clear with that, okay? As I struggle the PNG, and let's see if I save this, what's gonna happen here? Oh yeah, that's pretty crazy, huh? That's right, retro. Now repeat. So let's do back on repeat. Back on repeat. Back on repeat. No repeat. Nice. Save that. So now it's in the left section. What do we now need to do to put it in the center, guys? Anybody know? No, not absolute. Yeah, that's right. I set up back on position center. So now I'm going to say background dash position center. Hey, look at that. Much, much, much better, right? Much better, guys. Okay. Now you see how there's more space in here than there is here. What do we do with that one? What do we do here? Anybody know? What do you guys think? Well, a few things. We just add some margins. So, for example, I'm going to go now to the um, the index.html. You see how there's scissors? I'm going to say, okay, so dot scissors. That's the one on the right-hand side. I'm going to give it a margin left. Margin left of what? Margin left of 20 pixels. Okay, and then for the other one, the dot what? The dot, uh, what do you guys think? The dot, no, what is it? What is it again? 
the dot paper the paper that's gonna be margin what anybody know margin what margin what for the paper what margin we want to add zoom right yes retro margin right also 20 pixels save that hey look at that guys how cool does that look huh how cool does that look how cool does that look so cool sweet that was pretty amazing just like that we have our pretty much score game that's pretty much it we're done hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys tomorrow i'm just kidding <laughs> all right next one all right so next one is gonna be well if you think about this okay i want to make it so that when i hover over this they have like this really small like feeling of you know of it's an actual button okay it's an actual button what do you guys think we need to do to make it count like that what do you guys think we need to do to make it count like that hmm yes hover but hover and what how do we set that hover you see right now we have all these different divs and it's a little bit weird, honestly, right? Well, if I'm gonna do this, check this out. Here's what, how is, here's how I can do this. And you have to be very careful to make sure it fully works. So I'm gonna say, da hands. Every single this, oh, that's not what I want. <laughs> For this one, I'm gonna give it a hand class because I wanna target them all in the same way. Just like that, okay? Uh, the GitHub link is here, guys. Can somebody please paste the GitHub link? That'd be great. You guys, you guys have it, I think. Okay. So if I do that, I'm gonna give it a hand. That means if I go to my, my style of CSS, I can say hands dot hand. Yeah, transform translate or fake. That's right. Transform translate dot hand. Okay. I'm gonna say hey one. I'm giving it a cursor pointer. Okay, because now you see how it is a pointer. You see right there? It's a point now. And then what I'm going to do is on the hover of this hand, so the hands, on the hover of any hand, again, I think ahead. I'm giving it the same class because I want every single item to act the same. That's I'm giving the same class, guys. I want it to act the same. So the hand, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to say transform. And I'm gonna give it a translate. It's called a translate. So right here. I'll show it to you guys right here. It's called translate. So translate 3D is gonna basically translate the button. This is gonna be X axis. This is Y axis. So basically minus eight pixels is up eight pixels is what it's going to do. So if I save this, look at this. If I hover, hold on. Oh, that hand hover. I forgot about this one. Good point, good point. Okay. If I do this one. Oh. But of course, it's jittery, right? We don't want that. That's not a good user experience. So what do we do? We just add a small transition. So we say transition. Transition all. 0 0.25 seconds. Done. Boom. Hey, there we go. And we, my friends, have created the transition that we need. That is right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. That's all good. That looks amazing. Now the question is, of course, what's next? We've got the hands are complete, right? There's no plan here. There's no, everything's good. Next one is what? We need to create the view for the what? For the contest, okay? Create the view for the contest. Now, of course, um, a few things we can do. I can actually go and create the view for the contest, or we can work on this create the on-click -click event just in case so we can do some JavaScript. How about that, guys? Okay, should we do that? Let's maybe go and skip ahead a little bit and just go into the JavaScript portion. And then we can always do the contest here right after. So let's just do that one. That's right, Nitin. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do that. So the, to create the JavaScript portion again, um, I'm actually gonna follow along just the way I did it here with JS. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new folder called JS. Boom. Inside here, I'm gonna create a, a JavaScript called index.js. Inside here, new file, it's called index. Ooh, it's not creating it. Index.js, guys. Beautiful. All is good to well. All right. Now, okay, let's think about this, okay? What do we want to do? What do we want to do 
once we, you know, click on something, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? What do you guys think? Hmm? What about Zoom? YouTube? Choose. That's right. Choose, right? So we want to choose it, right? Well, mm, not in, not a hreflink. And hreflink is about taking to the next page. We're still on the same page. We're not trying to do any new page. Not necessarily, Joe. We want to have looking add an event listener, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to create a function called the pick user hand, right? So when I click on one of these buttons, it needs to call a function to actually pick for it, right? So to actually make some functionality happen so we can, we can actually pick the next, the computer can pick as well. So, you know, so we can start playing this game, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function. I'm going to say const pick user hand. And I'm going to pass in a hand here. Now you might be wondering what kind of a function is this not? This is called an arrow function, guys. Those of you who are completely new, it's called an arrow function. And it's a new way to write functions inside ES6. Usually you would do this. You will say function, function, pick user hand, right? Same thing, guys. This is the same thing as what this is, right? But no, we're using arrow functions for now because that's the new, the new kind of latest and greatest, I guess you can say, right? Somebody said here, link the JS file. That's right, magic man. That's good. So we need to link the JS file as well. So let's go to ns.html. And everybody know how we link the HTML file or the script file? So we'll say what? Script. Or you can even use a shorthand. I call it script source right here. See? Shorthand. M abbreviation. Enter, enter. And I'm going to say what? JS slash ns.js. Done. Done. That's right, Asada. Unclick to the HTML element. So now, check this out, right? We have a function called pick user hand. Basically, this is gonna be called whenever you pick something, right? Let's go to our index.html. And what we can actually really do, which is really, really cool, is on the click of, of an image, we can call a function. Unclick, look at this, guys, unclick. I'm going to call this function called pick user hand. Pick user hand just like this right here. Unclick, pick user hand. Right? Unclick. Same thing with this one. Unclick. Pick user hand. Right? Also to a function. Same thing with this one. Unclick. Ooh. Unclick. Pick user hand as well. Right here. And that's it, my friends. Pick user hand. So go ahead and save that. That's right. That's right, that's right, that's right. <clears throat> so pick the user hand. But of course, we need to tell this function, what do we pick? Do we pick this, this, this? We don't know otherwise. Otherwise, it's just wonky, right? So what we want to do is actually make it so we know exactly what we pick. So for example, if I select something, I'm going to say what? For this one, I'm going to say, what do I pick here? I'm going to put it into a quote here. I'm going to give it a parameter. I'm going to say here what? Paper. Nice. Then I'm going to say what? This is going to be what? Scissors. Scissors. Okay, great. Then I'm going to say what? Then it's going to be what? Rock. Rock. That's right. Okay. Paper, scissors, and rock. Just like this. So save that, right? And so let's take a look at how this actually works, guys. I'm going to console log this hand parameter. Console.log hand. Boom. Console.log. Let's see what actually happens in here. So, okay, save that. Right click inspect the element so we know what we're working with. Boom, boom. Console. You guys got it? Now, let's see if this actually happens. Okay. Wait, that's, the, that's, actually, that's actually the one that's already built. <laughs> this one. Ooh, it's not happening. Oh, okay. oh, because inspect element. I did inspect the wrong one. Let's do console. Oh, look at that, guys. Boom. Rock, 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 rock. See? Scissors, scissors, scissors. No, 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 no. See? So, what this tells me is now I've connected my HTML to my JavaScript. You see? 
my goal is to pass the data that what I clicked on to what? To the JavaScript portion. That's the goal, guys, all the time. Okay? That is the goal. All right? That is the goal. Beautiful. Okay, sweet, guys. Sweet, 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 sweet. So we've got this console log hand. Okay? Awesome. After that, what are we going to do? After we're going to do it, we have picked the hand now, and of course, we're going to do we're going to, need to do something with the hand. What what should we do? What's the next thing we should do, guys? Anybody know? What should happen inside this function, guys? What should happen? I want to I want you guys to think for a second here. What should happen inside this function? Zoom, YouTube. Sam. Okay, we can do that. Yes, we can put it into a variable, but technically this hint is already a variable. Um, the choice is already saved. It's this one. Mm. 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 So remember guys, when we click on something, let's look at what happens here. I click on it. What happens? Yeah, display the hand on the next page. That's right. So we want to what? One, show the next page with the hand you picked. You picked. Right? But we also want to hide the current page. Yeah. Hide the current page. Right? We want to hide this page, right? We've clicked on it. We want to hide this page and show the next page, guys. That's correct. That's right. So let's actually hide. So let's actually hide this page. How do we do that? Well, we can use something called a document that creates selectors. So for example, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a variable called let hands. Is equal to document. That what? Query selector. Query selector. And I'm going to give that uh, the class dot hands. Okay. And on this, one, I'm going to say hands. Anybody know how do you hide an element? Anybody know? So the hands, by the way, the hands, how do I do this? Is because this whole element is has a class called hands, by the way. Now, how do I hide the element? Anybody know? That's right, display none. That's correct. So I'm going to say hands dot what? Dot uh, style dot display. Play is equal to none. That's it, right? So it's gonna be display none, everybody, right? <clears throat> so if I take this, boom, it's gone. So you see, we've gone the first first portion. It's now gone, but of course, now we need to create the next, <clears throat> hold on. We need to create the next portion now. All right. This is where it might get harder a little bit. Let's go into it. The next portion I'm gonna call it is with an inside is gonna call it a contest, okay? It's go, I'm going to call it a contest. The hands are all good, that's not a problem here. All right, let's create another div after the hands and we'll call it the contest. So div class contest. And this is where we'll show you the results. Okay, now of course, if you look at my results, all right, what do we have? You know, what boxes do we need to create to actually showcase the results? Anybody, I want you guys to think about what boxes are we going to create inside here? Anybody know? Okay. Anybody know? Thank you, Manav. What boxes are we going to create here, guys? Three boxes, okay? One. Two. And then what? <clears throat> and then three. That's correct. Right? One, two, three. One that showcases which what you picked. One that showcases the winning selection. Who went, who lost. And then another one for the computer choice. So let's do that right now. Okay. The first div, div class, is gonna be the user hand. So div class is equal to I'm gonna say user hand. Okay, close this one out. And this user hand has a few things, of course. What do we have? Inside this user hand, what do we have, guys? We have what? The title. And then we have the actual what? Anybody know? The actual image. 
So let's do that right now. So we'll say here H1. That's going to be what? You picked. Okay. You picked some image. And let's, for example, and then let's wrap this image around a div. So I'm going to say div class is equal to hand image container. Boom. And for now, what I like to do, guys, is I know that we need to have the actual image that we should have. But I actually like to have a placeholder image. One key thing you can take away from this is whenever you're creating something and something changes all the time, but you don't have the JavaScript just yet, just create placeholder code, create placeholder images. So, for example, I'm going to create a random image. I'm going to just add a random image here. I'm going to say image, image, right? <clears throat> Source. Source is equal to, let's just say this is assets, and I'm going to say um, paper. Why not? Doesn't matter too much, right? So now, if we look at it, what do we have? You picked, right? But if I close this out, look at this. If I hit it, this disappears. So now we have this, right? So now we're working with something. Awesome. Sweet. Our next one, let's go and pick which one. Our next one is going to be the you win, right? Which is which portion? The center portion, which is going to be the dish portion right here. Okay, I'm going to call the referee portion. So div class. Okay. Referee. Boom. Dunzo. Referee. It's good. Referee. And this one, I'm going to say div class is equal to what? Is equal to decision. Now, the one thing you need to create is this this decision right here. So, you know, you lose, you win. I'm going to say div class decision here. Right, just like that. And then I'll put an H1 tag inside here. And inside that, I'm going to say you win. For now, again, temp. this is temporary data. Okay, you win. Again, placeholder data, okay? And of course, we need to have a create a button. So I'm going to say div class. And there's the new game button. The new game. New game like this. New game. That's right, Magic. I'm going to set the attribute in the image later on. New game. And this is going to have the text what? Text play again. Play again. Right here. Okay. So I'll save that. Okay. Hit this to remove this. You win play again. Okay. Okay, no, 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 no issue here. Nothing too crazy. Next one, let's create the next one. Is going to be the computer hand, right? So the contest title. That's right. I'm excited too. So I'm gonna say div class. What should we call this one, guys? Anybody know? What should we call our next computer computer section? If you call this user hand, what should the computer one be? What do you guys think? What should the computer one be? Zoom, huh? Okay, I actually kind of like a house hand, or we can say computer hand. Oops, not this one. Hold on. We call it computer hand. Yeah, you, you can call it house hand too, actually. Yeah. Okay. Inside that as well, same thing. We have an H1. This is what the house picked. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. And then of course, and then of course, after that one is gonna be, we're gonna create another div for the image. Div class. Div class is going to be a hand image container. Hand image container. Boom. And inside there's gonna be an image. Again, placeholder image guys, okay? placeholder image. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that, my friend. All right. I'm going to say image. Oh. I'm going to say image and source is again, placeholder image just for now. I'm going to say assets. Scissors. Why not? Okay. Also, all placeholder image. No need for that. Okay. So if we pick something, again, this will again. So now we can work with something like this. Okay. So you have you picked, you win, the house picked. Okay. We've got this content that's gonna appear randomly later on, okay? 
let's just style this content for now. Let's style it, right? If I have this, let's go to my style the CSS. Let's just start styling the actual full on what? The actual full on contest. So one, one first things first, I'm gonna give uh, create a class. I'm gonna say um, dot contest because remember this is the the whole wrapper is called contest right here. And for this dot contents contest, we'll say well let's give it a width for now of 900 pixels. Okay. 100 pixels. Okay. Why I do that because. It's supposed to be a little bit bigger. If you look at front of mentor, you can see that if I go ahead and, and just simply think, it's a little bit outside these boxes, you see? It's outside the boxes. Right here, that's how. Okay. Nice. So with 100 pixels, next up is we're going to say dot contest. And the dot contest. Now, of course, guys, what do you guys see on the contest section, okay? What do we need to do to make sure, you know, of course... One, it's a little bit weird right now because we don't have what? Because there's one thing that we don't have. Right now, it's top to bottom. We need to make sure it go goes from left to right. What do we need to do? Anybody know? What do we need to do? Anybody know? Well, we do display flex. Display flex. Hey, that's right. Display flex, John. That's correct, right? Now, here's an interesting one. We display flex, no problem whatsoever. All right. Let's now maybe I want to change the images to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say contest image. I'm going to say this is, has a width of 275 pixels and a height of 275 pixels right here. So now the images are a little bit bigger. Okay. Which I like a lot. Okay. Now what I want to do now. Okay. It's something very interesting. How do I make sure that all these divs that are in here, they're equal width? What do I do? And we talked about the last time, guys. Those of you who are new to those of you who are in, what do we do? We talked about the last time. Not align. We're not going to go into align it. No. That's right. Grid may also work. But it's actually going to be the following. I'm going to give every single one of these, not flex column, I'm, all, I'm going to get every single one of these divs right here, a flex one. So what does this mean? Check this out. If I do here, dot contest, I'm going to give it a say div. Now, what this means, this right here means contact the divs right under. So, so dot contest, I'm, I'm going to target just this div, this div, this, and this div right here. Because you see how there's div inside this div? If I do this without that, then it will target all the divs. This one and this one, this one and this one. To not target it, I could do it like this, meaning, hey, target the, the one that's the closest, okay, to the contest. And now I'm gonna say flex one. Check this out. You see what just happened? All of a sudden, we just changed. That's right. Every single div is exact the same width. Now, it's weird the way it is right now, but don't worry. We'll, we'll figure this out. Okay, flex one. I'm going to add some margin to the contest. I'm saying margin top. Top of what? Of 50 pixels. Just like this. Okay, to add some space into it. All right. And then let's not target the H1. So I'm going to say dot contest. Boom. Under the H1, I'm gonna say color white. Color white, All right? So I wanna change these titles right here to be color white. I wanna change the font size. Font size to be what? To be 20 pixels. Nice, so it's a little bit smaller, okay? I'm also given a margin top for this specific H1. I'm gonna say margin top here. Of, tw of 20 pixels as well. And we'll give it a margin bottom of 50 pixels to push it away from these buttons. Right there, let's see, that's it. Margin bottom of 20 pixels, beautiful. And then I'm gonna say this one, I'm gonna say text align center to put it in the center. Oh, you see, that's it, right? Now, I know it's not fully still centered, but then don't worry about it. We'll figure this out in a second here, okay? 
we'll figure it out in a second. The one thing I want to figure out now, however, is, well, uh, the what. What do you guys think? A few things. Let's talk about the actual, uh, the, you know, this right here. This right here. So we have these. And what you can see is, you see, this right here is centered. So I just want to show you just how these work out. So we have the contest, and you can see how every single div is centered exactly, not centered exactly, but has the same width. Every div has the same width. The left, the center, and the right. Why? Because flex one. Flex one says, hey, you know what? This is saying, hey, the, um, the importance of this div is the same as the importance of this div, which is the same as the importance of this div. That's what that means. If one of these divs has the importance of flex 0.5, this div will be much smaller. Just letting you guys know how that works out, okay? So we give them the same exact importance. It's all about importance, guys. <laughs> HTML likes importance. <laughs> likes to feel important. That's right. Now, let's look at these images. You see, hand image container. What do you see, right? Well, it's, you see that it's not centered, actually. Correct? How do we center this image inside this div? Who knows? Come on, let me know, guys. Nitin, that's correct. 1 FR, 1 FR. That's right. Grid may also work. That's correct. N Nitin. But, Zoom, what do you guys think? How do we center these image inside this div? Anybody know? Mm. Yeah. That's right. So, display flex on this one, right? So, if I do the simply display flex. Flex, and I say align, if I say justify content center. Boom, see? It just centered it just like that. Beautiful. It's so easy. Not, that's right. That's it. So, to target this one, inspect the element. You can see that, what, what am I targeting here? I'm targeting hand image container. That's why I created the class, because I want to be able to target this and this together. All right, so let's do that right now. So we'll say dot contest dot hand um, image container. Hopefully this works. All right, and I'm going to say display flex. Beautiful. And then justify content. That's it. That's it. Now it's centered perfectly. Okay. Next up, let's work on this section right here. Right here. This section right here. This section right here. Okay. One, you uh, need to make this bigger. Two, you need to center it in the center. So it's all in here. Okay. Uh, how do we do that? Well, let's go down to that and say that referee. Referee. Okay, referee. Okay, again, how do we make sure, guys, you know this is the drill. How do we center this you win and play again? So let's see here. You know, everybody know? You guys know the drill. The drill, the drill, the drill. It's so simple. The drill. Justify content and what? And what? Justify content and what? That's right. We put. That's correct. You put in two columns. That's right, Sam. So number one is put in two columns. So we'll say display flex. Right? See? And then I, and I put into a column. So I'm going to say flex direction column. So good catch on this one. Okay. But man, col remember, just col columns puts it from top to bottom. But how do I center them, Sam? Or how do I center them, uh, Lamont? How do I center those? That's right. Align items. So I'm going to say this. One, I'm going to say align items. Center. And just for content. You guys can see I'm reusing the same. The concepts are the same, guys. The concepts are the same. There's so much you can do with just a few. If you know the most, some of the most basic concepts that are really important in coding. And look at this. You win and this is so much better. All right. So much better. Okay. Now let's go ahead and, and change this. You win. So I'm going to say here the referee h1 and i'm gonna give it a font size font size of what of 45 pixels beautiful that's correct asif and brian that's right okay okay and then after that uh well at this point i want to now focus on the actual new game button so let's do this one now okay so 
We got this play again button. Let's focus on this new game button, right? This new game button is just this. It has new game. Okay. So let's do it like this. We'll say that new game. That new game. Like this. Beautiful. All right. First things first, we need to give it a background color. So let's say background color of what? White. That's it. White. Right? Now it starts to white. Now, one cool thing you can understand. In order for us to create this into an actual button, yes, we can give it a width. We can give it a height. One cool thing, though, here's what we can do. And you can remember this for your whole life. Okay, it's a really cool trick that I use all the time. A button is not really about width and height. It's not really about that. A button is about a piece of text. And then you telling that piece of text to have a specific padding. And push the button out. That's all you are doing, my friends. So if you want to create a button that surrounds a piece of text, it's like you are taking, for example, you know, let's just say this this uh, little ear pods I have here and you're right and you're and you're saying hey you know what you know put space here I want, I want you to put space here put space here put space here put space here and so now it becomes a much bigger square or circle whatever it might be okay so back on white after that I'm gonna say padding I'm gonna say give it a padding now the first this is a shortcut for you your first one could be top and bottom so I'm gonna give it 12 pixels this stands for top and bottom, both top and bottom, okay? The second number stands for 24 pixels. That says for left and right, guys. So this stands for top and bottom, left and right. I can individually say top, bottom, left, right. I don't want to do that, okay? That's not for me. So look, you see, it just simply expanded, guys. That's it. It simply just expanded, okay? Next up, let's go give it a border radius. And that's going to be, what, six pixels? Okay. Six pixels. Nice job. Save that. Okay. Look at that. Starting to look at the button. Let's give it a cursor pointer. Nice. Let's go ahead and give it a transition. Transition of what? Uh, actually, no. Forget transition for now. Do not want that. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and change the color for it. Here's the color, guys. This is an interesting color. It's the color looks a little bit like this. Boom. This is the color. I'll put a few guys in the Zoom chat here. Boom. That's the color, guys. All right, everybody? That is the color. Right here. So the color is like this. And right there, see, it's starting to look a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot better. Now let's make it into actual button. So let's go ahead and create a new game, the hover. So we'll do a that new game. Hover. i will put create a hover section. Okay. Um, after that, we're going to... Number one, let's change the background a little bit. So background color. Here's sometimes what I like to do. For example, I like to look at like a... You know how it gives me some options? Like bisque, beige. Let's just call it like a bisque right now. Because if I hover, it's just like a very small difference, you see? Very small difference. And then I'm going to say transform. I'm going to actually transform it up. So when I click, when I hover over it, it feels like there's a button there. Right there. Transform, translate 3D, minus 2 pixels. Boom. Boom. Now, right there, see? But of course, we're not done yet because we don't want to have it be that jittery. What do we need to, to do to make sure it's not that jittery, guys? What do we do? Anybody know? What do we do? What do you guys think? What do you make sure that it's not, it's not jet jittery so it's smooth? What do you guys think on Zoom? Lamont. Yeah, that's right. Transition, Osada. That's right. So I want to say transition here. Transition. And that will be what? Transition on all 0. what? 15 seconds. You see that? Hey, look at that. So much better. Of course, this does nothing for now, but this is now where JavaScript comes in, guys. So we have the, you know, play again. Hey, beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. So look at that. So guys, look at this. It's pretty much there. If I refresh the whole thing, of course, this is here, but don't worry about that. If I click on it, 
See? So, okay. Now let's think about it like this. Now this is where the JavaScript comes in. We've got these two pages. They are there, no problem. We need to think about how do we interact with it and show the right stuff. Well, for one, when we first start out, okay, uh, this shows right now we have a where this shows let me go ahead and remove this this show is showing and this is showing which one do we actually need to show which oh, only which one do we need to show which one the top one or the bottom one the top one we need to show or only the bottom one now tell me which one we need to hide the bottom one or the top one which one do we need to hide now the the which one the bottom one that's correct the bottom one so to hide the bottom one, right? If we go to style CSS, it's the contest, right? You see it says display flex. Well, let's change it to display none for now. For now, it's not for now, it's not necessary. For now, it's not necessary. But you see, it's just hit, no problem. That's right. Now, when we go back to Insta.js, check this out. We're hiding the hands, but we need to show the contest. So what can we do with that? Now we need to hide this portion needs to hide, which it is using this, you see, but we need to show this portion. So what do we do? Same thing. Let what? Let contest is equal to document dot query selector. Beautiful. And we'll say dot contest dot contest right so we're gonna grab the actual div contest and anybody know for those of you who are on zoom i know on youtube you might know some of you guys might know those of you on zoom how do we change what do we do with the contest how do we show the contest now guys what do you guys think lamont craig what do you guys think sam how do we show the contest hmm if here we have display none to hide it, what can we use to show it? Not necessarily. Fl oh, flex. That's right. So instead of display none, I say display show. Well, yeah, it's kind of like show. Yeah. So I say contest dot style dot display. It will take you back to flex because remember before it was flex. So now check this out, guys. Ready? Them. Boom. That's that. We hit one, we showed another one. That's it. And so we just keep doing that back and forth, 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 and back and forth. Okay. Let's refresh it again. See, right there. Boom. See, right there. Refresh it again. Beautiful. So we got that portion. Okay. Awesome. Now, of course, when we click on something, right, we need this to actually show the correct, you know, well, what you picked. What you picked. So what do we do? Currently we have a placeholder paid with a PNG. Well, how do we change it? Well, again, document the query selector, guys. Here, I'm gonna create a comment here. Um, I'm gonna say set the user pick. I wanna say the following. I'm gonna say document dot get element. Now, I need to actually grab this image. It's hard for me to grab this image if there's no ID. So let me see, Command Z. I'm going to give this image an ID and I'll call it user pick image. User pick image. Save it. User pick image. Right here, guys. Okay. Yes, I'm going to say dot get element. Dot get element by ID. I'm going to say, what is it? User pick image. And I will say what dot source is equal to what? This is the interesting portion is equal to what? Is equal to what? This might something be really complicated for you. Hmm. All right. Remember, we have this. We know what we picked here. Is equal to what? 
we're changing the source to the source that needs to actually be correct. So if I clicked on this, the hand, the source needs to be paper. Or if I clicked on scissors, the source needs to be scissors. If I clicked on rock, the source needs to be a rock. Right there, guys. Well, not necessarily hand, because if I do this, that's not gonna do anything for me, right? So if I click on that, uh, it's just, it's a weird image, right? So I'm changing the source, guys. Remember, see, if I right click on this one, I'm changing the source. You see, well, this one just became hand. So this is what we need to think about this for a little bit here. Well, how about this? I'm gonna say it like this. I'm gonna say if, if hand is equal to, let's just say a rock. I'm gonna take this, right? Dot source, and I'm gonna give the source of what? Or let's just say the source of what? That's right. Oh, good, good. That's a good one, Asada. That's actually, it's a good, really good one. That's a really good way of doing it. You can say, well, it's right here. It's assets, assets slash what? Rock dot PNG, right? So let's try that. I click rock. See, now it's rock, guys. You see, now it's rock. But of course, I want to do the same thing for, you know, the scissors and everything else. I can actually make this a little bit shorter for you to this out. I'm going to create a dictionary object. Some of you might know, might know what that is. Some of you might not. A dictionary object is a key value pairing. It's like when you go to a dictionary and you open up the dictionary, right? Inside the dictionary, you have the word and then the, the definition for that word. I'm going to have the same thing here. I'm going to have a word. And for that word, instead of having definition, I'm going to have the URL to that specific word. So, right? Let's do this. I'm going to say const hand options. Now, this is something that's a little bit more advanced, guys. Options. I'm going to create a dictionary object, okay? Again, dictionary, it's literally like a dictionary with a key value pair. The key is the left hand side, the value is the right hand side. So, for example, I'm gonna say a rock here. This is my key. This is my key. The right hand side is gonna be the URL for that key. So the URL is going to be assets slash rock.png. Boom. Okay, what is the next key? That's right, it's a data structure. That's correct. What is the next key? This is why algorithms and data structures are so important, guys. Next key is what? Paper, right? Paper. So I'm gonna say dash assets dash paper dot png. Boom, done zone. And the last one, somebody tell me, is going to be which one? Somebody tell me in the Zoom chat. Mm -mm. Mm. Scissors. That's correct. Scissors, Bama. That's correct. Lamont. That's right. Scissors. So scissors. Again. Dictionary is an important data structure that you guys absolutely have to learn. It's one of the most used ones that I personally use. I've always used, used at work. And it's something that, yeah, something we teach very much in the bootcamp. Assets. Slash. I'm going to say what? Scissors.png. Got it, guys? Scissors.png. Right there. Okay. Save that. Okay, cool. That looks all good. No problem. Now, how do we use this actually, right? It's just there, but we don't use it. Well, check this out. I don't need this if statement anymore. That's right. It is kind of like JSON. You're right. It is kind of like JSON. You're correcting that one. That's why JSON can really be easily transformed into an object. So, instead of having a source like this, this out i'm going to use the hand options i'm gonna say hand options and i'm going to get the value using the key of the hand remember when i click on something this hand can either be a rock a paper or scissors right either one of these three values okay okay 
So whatever, depending on what it is, if it's hand, let's just say for this, if it's a, uh, a rock, if this value is rock, it will go to hand options and it will find rock and give me this value. That is what this does. I'm accessing the actual object. It's not zero, one, two. It's actually a key value pair, David. An array has indexes of zero, one, two. This is key values. It works based on keys. It's like when you take a key, right? You unlock your key with your uh, to your door. The key is the actual word. In this case, the hand is the key. The value is what you unlock after you put the key in. Okay, guys, just so you guys understand. The hand is the key. This is the value. You put this key in into the hand options. Let's just say it's rock. It will give you the value. It's kind of like, that's right, Bama. It's kind of like case statements. You're right in this one. It's a mapping. That's right. You call the value Hassan by the key. So here's the cool part. Because of this shortcut, not only can I reuse this everywhere in my application, but this shortcut allows me to just have one line to do everything that I need to do. That's it. So if I, for example, select this, hey, look at that. See, it picked it. If I select this, it picked it. Again, if I select this, it picked it. Right? That's the cool part about this. It just makes it so much easier for us. Whichever one you pick is going to be the one. That's it. All right, cool. So we got that portion. That's the pick, right? That was taken care of. That's right. It is. It's very impressive. It's very interesting for us. Just if you use data structure like this. Yeah, it's JavaScript is pretty cool. And you guys haven't seen anything yet. So now, look, we picked ours. Okay, we picked our hand. But how about let's use, the, let's have the computer pick the hand. Um, not Osada sometimes, but the thing is Osada is like, Osada says, hey, can't you just use concentrate the path and go to the location? You could. In real life, however, the path might change. The path might be different. The path might look completely crazy. So sometimes you cannot use the name. So the, you cannot, sometimes it's better to have a mapping like this. Cause you know, later on, you know, what if I change this path to have to be a different name, you know? And so if I use this dictionary, I can only change it once. Okay, I have to change it once and then everywhere else is still working. Okay. <laughs> oh, you missed a lot, Retro. You, you, you missed a lot. <laughs> Don't go to the bathroom next time. I'm just kidding. Go to the bathroom if you have to. <laughs> All right. So we've picked our hand. Now the next portion is going to be, well, let's have the computer pick a hand. So I'm going to create a function called pick computer hand. It's actually not that hard. Pick computer, computer hand. Okay, pick computer hand. That's right, pick computer hand, okay? So let's go ahead and have the computer pick some kind of a hand as well, okay? So, mm, let's do that. Well, okay, what are the options that the computer has? What are the options the computer has? Has Rock, paper, scissors. So let's create those options. So I'm gonna say let hands is equal to what? Equal to either this, I'm, gonna, I'm going to use an array this time. That's right, Sam. I'm going to use an array. Why? You'll see why. An array is a list of items. So I'm gonna say here, rock, then paper, paper, then scissors, right? So the computer can choose from any of these ones. Right? The computer's gonna choose from it. That's right, we're gonna use, and so what we're going to use now is we're going to use math.random because check this out, right? For example, if I want to console log, let's just say here, I want to, I want to, let's just say I want the computer to pick, you know, paper. All I have to do is say this, hands at the position of one. This is position zero, this is an address, right? Well, what this is, is an address, just like how, like you have an address to your house, everybody, right? An array has an address to its elements. 
This is address zero. This is address one. This is address two. That's right. Okay. So for example, let's go ahead and check this out, right? I'm gonna, I'm going to call this function right now. Pick computer hands. I'm gonna say console the log. Pick computer hand. No, not console the log. I'm not actually called the function. Sorry. Pick computer hand. Boom. Let's call the function. Okay. Let's call this function. Okay. And I'm going to call this function. And so now if I right, if I click on something like this, let me see here and inspect down on this one. Console. You see, I had the computer pick paper just the way I wanted to. Hands one is paper. That's what I had to pick. Paper. That's it, guys. You see? So now, now that we know that, now that we know that, okay, all we can do is the following. Let me see here. Okay. Now that we know that, let me see here for a second. What I can do is kind of like this. I can go ahead and you pick a random number. What if I used math.random to pick a random number and have it pick rock, paper, scissors based, based on that? Okay. So I'm going to say let CP hand. That's the one it's going to pick is equal to hands. Remember, we can say zero or one or two. Well, what we can do instead of zero, one, and two, let's have the computer pick a math.random. What is math.random? Well, it's kind of like this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to say math.random. Just so you guys know it as well with me. You see? Math that random returns a number between 0 and 1. So it can be 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, whatever. Well, but you can make it any number. So for example, if I say math that random. Okay. I'm actually going to multiply it by the length of these options. Because for example, if she, if the if math that random said 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 3 is what? What is it? 1.5, right? 1.5, correct? You see? So depending on what on what it is. So for example, right? Let's say we're gonna multiply this by 3. Let's say math that random picked 0 0.9. Okay, 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9 times 3. What is 0 0.9 times 3 is how much? Right there. See? 2.7. Just like that. Okay? 2.7. All right? So, that's what we're trying to do here. Now, based on that, what we can do is we can round the number correctly. So, right? 2.7. Now, is 2.7 closer to 3 or, or is 2.7 closer to 2? Is 2.7 closer to 3 or 2? What do you guys think? To 3. That's right. So we need to some, some find a way to round this, right? So for example, let's go ahead and, and round math, math round. What is the best way to round the number? That's right, see? So I can do math down round to round to the nearest number. Right? So if I pass it a, for example, 5.95, it will say 6. If I pass 5.5, it will say 6. But if I pass 5.05, it will say 5. So what are we going to do? We'll say math down round. That's right, math down round. Actually, no, we cannot do that, actually. We, have, we can do that because, mm, no, that, that should be, mm, let's see, 0 0.12. 3, 3, 3, 0, 1, 2. We can't really... Okay, never mind. So we can't really do math that round. We have to do math that floor. Why? Let me show you why. Math that floor is going to take it to the bottom. So let me show you why. Because if we do math that round, we can, we can... It will give us a three number 3. But the problem with that is... This is 0, this is 1, this is 2. Remember, computer goes from 0 to 2, guys. Right? Go from 0 to 2. Right? So we can't really do three. We have to always go to the bottom one. And math.floor, what that does is the following. Math.floor. 
Floor. I want to show you. Floor. Returns the largest integer last turn equal to a given number. So, for example, if I do 5.95, it will always tell me 5. 5.05 is 5. So, always say to the bottom number, the closest whole number, right? To the bottom. That's what floor does. Okay, guys? And so, because of that, if I, if I get 2.73, 0.73, what am I going to get? What index am I going to use? Two or three? Anybody know? Two or three. That's right, Bama. Two, right? So this will be scissors, okay? If, let's say, somehow I got 1.73, 1.5, what am I going to... What index am I going to use? One. What if I got 0 0.95? What am I going to use? Zero. That's correct, you see? That's right. So that's how that's being picked, guys. Okay? And so all we did here is look, math.random, pick a random number, multiply it by three, and use math.floor to just, you know, I call it floor it. That's what I like to call. <laughs> I call it floor it. <laughs> right? So now we've picked our hand, guys. And once we've picked our hand, what can we do now? Well, we've picked our hand. Let's actually change our hand on the right hand side, right here, whatever is inside here. And just how I did it here, I'm going to copy this portion right here. You see? Boom. Document. Dot get element by ID. User pick image. Source handout. But of course, we can't do user pick image. No. We cannot do that. We're, we can use what? We need to create a new ID for this one. So this one is say what? Computer pick image. To change this one to this one. So I'm say computer computer pick image let's copy this one save that computer pick image go to index.js instead of this one i'm gonna grab the one that's computer pick image and i'm gonna change the source based on the options but not based on the hand but based on what anybody know not based on the hand but based on what the cp hand that's right somebody asked the question why do we multiply by, by three because math.random gives us a value between 0 and 1 and so we need to increase that ability to so that if it's 0 0.5 it's actually 0 0.5 times 3 which is 1.5 you see what i mean so otherwise you know it's just gonna be between 0 and 1 and so we're not gonna be able to get like scissors we need to be able to get to bigger numbers right that's always how we use it that's right cp hand and let me show you how this looks like guys so let's let's take a look at it here for example I'm going to say console.log, dot log, log, cp hand, cp hand, comma, cp hand. Boom. Oops. That's right, magic man. That's right. Do, 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 do. Save that. Let's go back to our rock, paper, scissors game, okay? Now, if I right click, right -click inspect them on this one. Let's click on it. Boom. You see? It picked scissors as well. You see? That's what it picked. If I try again. It picked now rock. So that's what it's doing. It's picking specific ones, right? Based on the ran random number based on a random number guys that's a really cool part so look we've got that now let's go ahead and actually return our our uh what's it called our suggestion what do we pick so here i'm going to click return cp hand return cp hand now i'm going to return it why because i'm actually going to capture it here i'm gonna say let cp hand here is equal to Pick up your hand. So basically, I have the user hand, which is here, right? I call it the user hand. And then I have the CP hand, the computer hand, right? Okay, we've got that. We've got that. Amazing. But here's my question. What now? What do we do now? Well, now we decide who's the winner and who's the loser. Because <laughs> let me say, you, you look like Elon Musk. Thank you. I do look like Elon Musk. A lot of people have said that. <laughs> right? So now... We need to decide. Let's ref let's now go ahead and create the referee function. Say like const referee const uh, referee 
is equal to two, 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 two. Beautiful, right? So we're going to pass in two parameters. What parameters are we going to pass in? Anybody know? What parameters are we going to pass in? There's two ones in the referee. We need to have the referee hand. And then which hand do we need to have? The which one? The computer hand. And the which one, guys? What do you guys think? And the user hand. That's right. So I'm going to say user hand here. Comma. CP hand. Now, this is just now a bunch of if and else statements, guys. Just be patient now with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of if and else statements. So, for example, guys, okay, if <laughs> I know it's a little bit crazy, if user hand is equal to right paper, paper, right, and and CP hand is equal to what scissors, scissors. Who wins? Right? Then who's the winner, guys? Am I the winner or no? Am I the winner or no? Who's the winner? The computer is the winner, right? Then technically, I lose. So we need to tell me that I lose. So I'm going to create a function called set decision, const set decision, basically to tell me that I lost is equal to decision. Right? And I'm going to console log my decision for now. Right? So tell me I lost, guys. Okay? All right? So now, what is my decision am I going to say? Set decision here. What am I going to say, guys? Anybody know? I'm going to say what? You lose. I'm a loser. That's right. I'm a loser. Okay? That means I get no points. I lose. Okay? But what if... Else, if, what if, my user hand, my user hand is equal to, for example, paper and the CP hand. And just so you guys know, where this means and, so both of these need to be true. And the CP hand is equal to rock. Then who's the winner? Do I win or do I lose? Switch statement is a uh, switch that could work, but the thing is because there's switch statement actually would not work. Sorry, in this one, switch that would not work. That's why I win. I'm the winner. So now I say what? Set decision. You win. You win, just like this, right? Now I win, but I also need to increase the score. So let's go ahead and create another function called set score. Const what? Set score is equal to here's the new score that we have right and console log the score right let's set the score right so it's going to increase on my current score console log mm. that's right console the log score okay now how do i set the score if i'm going to set set score how am I going to set the score? I want you guys to tell me. I want you guys to give me your ideas. I want you guys to tell, give me your ideas. There's a few ways to do this. Okay? A few ways to do this. That's right. Score plus one. Well, let's go ahead and create actually a variable called let score. The one that's going to keep track. And it's going to initially from zero. Let score. Initially it's zero. And so when we do set score, I'm going to say score plus one. I'm going to increase that score by one. And so now we have a new score that we can use. Everybody see that? That's right, Ashika. Increase the count. That's correct. All right. Increase the count. All right. So we got that portion. That's all good. Now, guys, <laughs> I love it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. I have all these if and else statements for you here. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste all of these ones for you right here. If user hand, CP hand, right? You guys can go ahead and look at these ones. These are all also inside the GitHub, guys. Go ahead and check it out by uh, below, okay? Check it out below. 
those of you who are on uh, Zoom, I'm gonna copy this for you as well and just paste it in for you. Command C. You guys can just copy and paste it, okay? Because there's no point of me just writing all this out. It's all about a bunch of decisions. And you can see there's only a few ways that I win. If I had the scissors and the CP hand, I score plus one. And if I have that rock, then score plus one. So it's gonna, and then otherwise it's, it's a tie. It really depends on what happens. All right. So guys, what do we have here? There's a three and a few ways only to win here. Just wanna let you guys know that, okay? But at that point, you have a referee. A referee will set the score and will tell us what's, who's the winner, who's not. So let's go ahead and actually do this, okay? Hopefully you guys copy and paste it. Just copy and paste it, guys. That's it. Just copy this portion. That's it. You might not even need this else if you just then you can do, you don't need to add this else if else if as well. Just remove the else that portion just to make it easier for you. Those of you are on YouTube, yeah, I can do it for you too. Here, hopefully, I'm not sure if I can actually. No, I cannot. Sorry, I cannot put it in YouTube, guys. Sorry. I have a limit of how many I have a limit to how many uh <laughs> how, how many characters I can put into the comments. So that I can't do unfortunately. But that's okay. Okay. Those of you on Zoom, did you guys get it? Give me can I give me can you give me a thumbs up? You guys got that? Yes, David. Got it. Thank you. Sweet. Beautiful. Alright. If you are gonna go speed for draws. That's right. So now, okay, we've got that portion. Of course you have a decision. So now the interesting thing is what happens when we set the decision to you win or you lose, okay? You win or you lose, okay? Decision is you win, you lose. So if I do this, okay, great. Let me see if I inspect. What do we say here? Console log, fresh it. Mm, doesn't do anything. Hmm. Why do you think it's not doing anything? Because why? Because we're not actually calling this function, guys. We need to call this function. So remember, we have the referee, we get our CP hand, now we call the referee function, and we say here the following, we say referee, okay? We First we pass in our hand, our option, and then we pass in the computer option, CP hand. Boom, save that, beautiful. Inspect the element on this one. And console, and now, I will say this, you lose. You see, the house pick, you lose. Because why? I picked scissors. Let's in the this one more time. Boom, it's a tie right there. That's it, my friends. That, my friends, is it, okay? That, my friends, is it. Beautiful. Let me go on now, go back. The one thing we do see, the score is not currently setting correctly. Let me see here. Uh, because I need to win, actually. Okay, great. So we got that portion. Let's go ahead and do this. For the decision, we need to change this to you win or you lose depending on what the decision is, okay? Okay, here. You guys want the GitHub? Yeah. Here's the GitHub, guys, for those of you who are on YouTube. This is the full code, guys. Those of you on YouTube, here's the full code, okay? You guys can use it. All right. Let's set the decision. Remember, decision is where, it's set where, it's inside here. To change that, all I have to do is do document, dot what, dot query selector, right? Class, like this, dot decision. And I'm gonna say dot what, dot inner, actually dot decision h1, right? Dot inner text, text is equal to what is equal to decision that's right that's it so now for example you see i'm going to replace the text with a decision that i passed in either you win or you lose that's all that's going on and so let's try that right now save it you lose makes sense let's refresh it one more time okay it's a tie beautiful one more time a it's a oh damn again holy moly Come on. Oh, I want to win. Come on. Give me winning one. And I win, right? Just like that, okay? Beautiful. So that's already working, guys. We're almost done. So close, guys. So, 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 so close. Next one. Same thing with the score. Remember, guys, we need to set the new score. Same thing. If you go to any slash HTML, the score is where? The score is here. 
and we can change that. So we do dot score. So document dot query selector selector. We say dot score, right? And we need to modify the text within the H1. So dot score, I'm going to say H1 as well, correct? And I will say dot inner text is equal to what? Score. That's it. So now, ready? Let me do this. You lose. Okay, so there's no score again. So re re refresh this. Two, you lose. Oh, dang, I keep losing every time. Boom. You, oh, come on. Give me something. Oh, you win. And look, the score increased by one. Hey, just like that, guys. Just like that, it's already working. Guys, at this point, everything is almost done. There's one last thing finished, last thing that we need to do, which is what? This play again button. We need to make sure that we can play again. After I added the above, I got them, wait. Your file couldn't be accessed, may have been moved, edited, or deleted. Mm, I don't think so. I want to make sure you have the whole function, my friend. So here, Sam, copy this whole function, the referee function, and just replace yours. Here. Right here. This is the whole referee function. Copy and paste it, okay? That's it, my friend. Okay, cool. So save that. Beautiful. Now, one last thing is play again button. So again, with this one, we're going to create a function called play again. So let me do that right now. It's going to be called restart game. So let's go and create a function. Const restart. Almost done, guys. Almost done. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. I'm liking this. Okay. And then what do we need to do to restart the game? Remember, to initialize the game, when we do this, we hide this box. This box. And we show this new box but just to go back to the page what do we do now what do we do guys who knows we do what we that's right hide and flex it hide and flex it hide and flex it now we reverse the psychology now now we say the following we go back to our see this contest right here where we display none i'm actually going to copy these ones right here coming from pick user hand paste it into here and i'm going to reverse them so now the hands is actually what display what flex versus the contest which is this one is display what none so look okay but of course it's not going to work because we need to uh we need to actually call this function so let's call this on the click of the play game function let's do this on click on click i'm call restart uh game right there save beautiful all right we restart the game all right my friends let's try this out okay <sighs> this out boom all right you win score added play again a another one you win but hold on score was not added hold on it's a tie you lose you lose you win why is the score not added? It just does not keep added. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's score the inner one. Mm. <laughs> it does not increase more than one for some reason. Why is that the case? I'm really curious. The restart game, my friends, was put inside here. You see this? div class new game i put an on click on this restart game so it's looking like it's working but hold on it's a tie okay you win plus one you win but it's not increasing anymore plus one why is that the case hmm that's interesting why is that the case they're so close i'm so close score is zero Oh, I know because I need to actually set the score. So I said to say the new score is equal to score. Remember, we're adding one here, but we're not actually saving that the new score, right? I'm adding one as a parameter, which is being added here, but I'm not replacing this score. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, be careful using cons. You cannot use cons to add. You, you cannot change. Yeah. And that's it. So now if I save this one more time, let's try it one, one last time, guys. One last time. Boom. You win. Okay, score one. Boom. You lose. You lose. You, you A score two again. Score three. All right, guys. How about this? Question. Okay, let's actually play this game, guys. You guys tell me what to pick, and we'll see if we win or not. You guys tell me in the Zoom and in the, in the YouTube chat, what do I pick? And I will pick that specific thing. Let's say rock, paper, bull, hand. Hold on. I mean, not. you need to give me rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that's the hand. Okay. So I see hand, hand. Okay. Okay. If you vote for hand, say hand. Put in a Zoom chat hand. If you vote for hand. I see a lot of hands. Okay. I see a lot of hands. Okay, let's see it, guys, all right? All right, let's see it, let's see it, let's see it. I'm gonna say, in that case, and, ready? And, what is it? Oh, I win! Let's go! Beautiful! <laughs> so it is a hand. <laughs> let's play again, one last time. What do you guys think? I see now rock, okay? If you, if you want me to put rock, say rock. Hey, let's do rock now. Rock. And. Oh, damn. You guys are good. Okay. 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 One last time. One last time. What do you guys want me to pick? One last time. What do you guys think? I saw rock. I picked paper. Paper again, Craig? Okay. Paper again. Okay. Let's do paper now. Holy moly. You guys are good. Okay. 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 Can we keep the streak going? Okay. What's next, guys? Tell me. Tell me. What's next? What do you guys think? What do you guys want me to pick? Hand again? Si Lamont says scissors, okay? Lamont says scissors, okay, let's see. Ooh, okay, scissors, okay, let's try it. Okay, guys, you ready? Ready? Scissors. Okay, ready? Oh, you lose. <laughs> Lamont, come on. I'm kidding. <laughs> so there you go, guys. But. We're not done yet. I want to actually put this live for all of us to use. So let's go ahead and do this, guys. Remember the drill. How do we make this live for you guys to use? Let's go to Netlify. Netlify. Not Netflix. <laughs> not Netflix. Netlify. Netlify. Not legit. Netlify. Okay. <laughs> I should have picked Rock Craig says. All right, Netlify. All right. Okay, you guys know the drill now at this point. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to log in with Net my Netlify account, which I already have. Okay, you can sign in with GitHub, whatever you got you, you got to do. Okay, I'm going to go to sites. And all you have to do is, you know, you see how this scrolls to the bottom? You just have to upload it. So let's go ahead and go to projects. Rock, paper, scissors game. I'm going to take this whole folder, guys. Take this whole folder and just move it down like this. Just move it down like this. And... Boom. A beautiful. Move it down. Let's see. Is it published now? I think it's published. So if I look at it now, let's see. If it's published, open it up. It's published right there. You, I'll give you guys the link. All right. I'm going to give you guys. Beautiful. I'm giving you guys the link. That's it, my friends. My friends. This is done. So, for those of you who are on YouTube, thank you very much. What I would say to you now at this point, I'll tell you something wrong there. <laughs> All good, Sam. Just just keep continue doing this. It, it, this will be on YouTube, so maybe you're going to rewatch some portions, Sam. Okay? All right? So, that's it, guys. Look, we've done the Rock, Paper, Scissors game. It's a clean, clean application. Okay? Um, nothing too crazy, but the logic is really interesting here. For example, we learned about objects. We learned about functions, you know, where to call the functions, of course. We learned about how to manipulate the DOM, right? We manipulate the DOM using the document, the query selector. We learned about how to hide one thing and then show another thing, correct? That's one of the things that we did for sure, right? So a few, a lot of things were showcased in here. Awesome, sweet. So this point, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Your homework, if you're in the challenge, your homework is going to be the following, of course. Let me show you the homework. Where's my homework? Where's my homework? Let me show you. Where's my homework? 
where's my homework? Swag. Here are my slides. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, come on here. In my slides, I hear the following. So that's it, guys. Your homework's pretty simple now at this point, and I'm going to create this for you. All right. Like I said, I would say for you is, you know, make, most importantly, guys, you don't have to modify anything crazy. For those of you who are in the challenge, you don't have to modify anything crazy. I would say for you is honestly just, I mean, you can make a few things. My suggestion is, you, of course, you can change the background, the font, the colors. I would say add some animation. So, for example, maybe if you win, if you win, if you win, if you win, add a jumping animation for the winner. Yeah, that's right. Right? So maybe something like this. Maybe if you win, win, maybe add a sound, you know, something like that, right? You can, you can use your uh, imagination for this, okay? Once you complete, most important is complete this application, guys. Once you complete it, make it into a homework post, right? This will be a homework post. Paste it in there. And of course, after that, submit it into the April. And that's it, my friends. So guys, that's pretty much it. Those of you on Zoom, you can feel free to stay. Those of you on YouTube, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been an amazing application. We finished the rock, paper, scissors game. We used JavaScript, HTML, CSS, all the foundations you need. We learned what? We learned about objects. We learned about functions. We learned about how to manipulate the DOM, right? And of course, we created a game using JavaScript. So that's it. Hope you guys have a great day. Smash that like button, okay? That'd be much appreciated. Subscribe for more videos like this, of course. We have, a, we have more videos coming up tomorrow. So come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST where we are building a SaaS product, a SaaS product. So come back tomorrow and we'll build that with you as well, okay? Other than that, I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you, wait, 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 in the next video. Bye-bye. Those of you on Zoom, feel free to stick around.